everyone. Hello, who's on? Tell me who's on, welcome. Hi. I'm getting set up, so we'll just wait till a couple people uh, join us here. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you can actually hear me out there. I know there's a little delay sometimes in the Facebook camera. New angle today. And I actually have a new microphone on today. I'm hoping it cuts down some of the noise, some of the background noise. I've got some windows open uh, because I'm going to get a little bit smoky in here with some chicken. Let me know. Yeah, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Sarah's with us. Susan's with us. Robert. Hey, Robert. How are you guys all doing? Robert, I've been watching you uh, with the kiddos at home. How's that going? I like the schedule you guys created. Nice. Susan says loud and clear. Awesome. Um, I started making a part of this dish earlier, um, and honestly, I'm going to say this a couple times, my uh, fan here is broken, and so the house gets pretty smoky, and I have all the windows open. Luckily, it's a great day for it, uh, except that I can't have the windows open when I'm chatting with you guys because uh, then you won't be able to hear me. So today we're making a skillet chicken, and we're also making um, a maple Dijon glaze to go on that. Hi, can you guys see me? Uh, and then we're also making a Brussels sprout salad, and we're going to use some of those same ingredients, the maple syrup and the Dijon mustard. So we're doing double duty with these guys. Right now, I'm starting with my chicken. I actually purchased uh, bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs because they have the best flavor. Um, I used to live on chicken breasts, and, and I got so burnt out and so bored of them. There's no really good fat in those, and there's no flavor. These are going to give you the best flavor. I think we're so afraid of um, fat that we, we tend to just uh, take, all, take all that skin and everything off. And I don't think we should be. I think there's a lot of, a lot of good reasons why we should be leaving that in there. Uh, I've got my skillet on about a medium uh, high heat right now. These are actually big, um, big breasts. I usually usually fit like six in this pan, but these are ginormous. So uh, I'm going to start with just three. I'm going skin side down, and what I did with these is I actually put in just some salt and pepper. So again, I've got medium high heat, uh, skin on, bone in, uh, chicken thighs. And um, and those actually have some uh, oil breasts, uh, any of any of the things that you have, and a uh, little salt and pepper. That's all I'm doing with this right now. And I'm gonna add a little pepper. My giant pepper grinder, if you've been following along, my giant pepper grinder um, is out of pepper. <laughs> what an odd time to run out of pepper. So I have these teeny tiny little guys on so on these down. All right, we're gonna let these cook. For 15 minutes, I'm actually going to set a timer so I don't lose track because you guys know I get a little chatty, don't you? Um, tell me how is everybody going? Like, who else is on? Natasha's with us. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Carol's with us. Hi, Carol. Okay, guys, we're making a skillet chicken today. Um, I'm setting a timer for uh, 15 minutes. I've got this on medium-high heat. Keep an eye on it. If you feel like your skin is getting really browned um, on the bottom and starting to burn, we can lower that heat a little bit. The goal with the skillet chicken, and by the way, the skillet chicken just by itself is um, is amazing. I'll come down here so you guys can see me. The skillet chicken by itself is amazing. You don't even need a glaze for it. Uh, but we're just going to top a glaze just for a little something extra today. So I've got these these um, uh, uh, breasts today that have the, the skin on and the bone in, and we're just letting them uh, um, sit there and cook in the pan. I'm gonna toss them, I'm gonna turn them, I'm gonna toss them in the oven, turn them one more time in the oven and add a, a glaze to them. Uh, again, um, medium high meat and salt and pepper on those chickens. That's all I have so far. The reason I'm doing it this way is you can honestly just cover this with a glaze and you can throw it in um, in the oven and, and just let it cook for like 30, 40 minutes. But I really want that crispy skin, right? If I'm going to have the skin, I want that crispiness. 
Uh, I think that's the alluring part of this. So we're going to let that just go. I'm going to check in with you guys over here. I know, new camera angles. I thought this would be easy, so we'll, we'll check it out. And then this is, this is, hello. Is the cast iron skillet important? Great question, Elizabeth. It's, um, it's not detrimental. You don't have to have a cast iron skillet, but I do like the way that um, cast iron cooks, and I like the way I get that crispy skin on a cast iron. But just use a fry pan. Again, this is cooked with what's in the house, and I've done it in a regular uh, fry pan, and it works just fine, too. So I'm going to sit over here, uh, and then this my head. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a glaze for that chicken. Give myself a little room. I've got a little garlic cloves that I'm just smashing up. These are a really good smash. And just chop that up a little bit. Now, I want to also call out, you'll notice in this pan over here, I've got, a, I've got something that's already cooked. I did this one before we started today. Because that's actually turkey. Um, because not everybody in my household likes chicken. And so uh, instead of chicken, I'm using turkey. And I did that just because I want you guys to see how how, um, how flexible this recipe is, right? You could use chicken. You can use pork chops in this, too. I think pork chops would work really well. Okay. Those morning, we've got a skillet chicken happening over here. Uh, skin side down. That's just cooking away. We're making a glaze for this. Checking in. Hey, Cody. Hi, Cody. How are you? Uh, just checking in with everybody, making sure we're good. And I'm gonna make the um, I'm gonna make the glaze now. I got a few things like in my way though. Over here, I've got a mint garlic. I'm gonna use some Dijon mustard. About a third of a cup of mustard. And by the way, all of the recipes I've cooked so far are on my website. And so um, at happyhealthy.com, you can go check that out. I think I need to find a new camera angle. This one's a little obnoxious today. I'm using uh, about a third of a cup of, of Dijon mustard. What I realized when I pulled my mustard up today is uh, my mustard was, uh, was was not quite a, enough of what I wanted. So I added, remember the broth that I cooked yesterday? Uh, or if you're watching this on replay, go back and, and check the page for how to deal with vegetables that are going bad. Um, I took some of the broth and I put it in the jar. And I just shook it up so I have enough uh, mustard, right? We just we make things work. And if you don't have enough mustard, even with the broth, don't worry about it. It'll be totally fine. Just use what you have. All right, so this is about a third of a cup ish. Pouring that mustard in. This is good too. It's actually, we're cooking things down in our pantry that maybe have been there for a while. Now, if you have. Um, you have some stone ground. You can use some stone ground. Of course, I like to do that. I love stone ground. Same thing here. I almost had hardly anything in here, so I mixed it up and I added a little bit of that water or that broth. Um, and I'm just going to dump that in too, because why not? A bit of that. All right. Let's just check. See how everybody's doing over here. Next, we're going to add in some uh, maple syrup. You guys know I like a good maple syrup. I don't like to use white refined sugar. The maple and the Dijon go so well together. So I've got probably about a quarter of a cup of maple syrup in here. And we dump that in. I save a little from my dressing. Apple cider vinegar. Bragg's is my favorite one. Uh, just a touch of apple cider vinegar is going to give this some tang. And a tablespoon. Let's do a little salt and a little pepper. There's my funky little pepper glaze. Alright guys. That's it. That's our glaze. Maple syrup, some mustard, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some salt, some pepper. I mean honestly, this could be your salad dressing. And our salad dressing that we're making is gonna be very similar to this. Set that aside. We don't need to worry about that right now. I just wanted that mixed up ahead of time. And, uh, and then we're going to just move on here. So let me just check who's all online. Any questions? Melissa says, I'm a sauce girl. Oh, I'm, I'm a total, I'm a total sauce freak. Everything is about the sauces, right? I said this is skillet chicken. could be amazing on its own. Uh, but with the sauce on it, oh my god, it's, it's so much, it's just like, how? Let me just take a peek here. Oh, yeah. 
take a look at these guys. Normally I don't like to mess with them too much, but I want to show you guys what we're looking like. You can see it's just starting to get brown and crispy, and we're not there yet. We're not, uh, we're not quite there yet. Also, make sure your oven's on about 425. Sounds like some high heat, and you're going to hear this sucker popping and, and uh, jumping in there, but it's going to be worth it. All right, that's that. While this is cooking, come on over here so you can see. Oops, I'm going to do this first. We're going to make some Brussels sprouts and kale salad. So I had a question on online yesterday, uh, what to do with kale that's about to go bad, and I also had a question about what to do with some uh, Brussels sprouts. So we're going to play with those today and make ourselves a really great, really yummy salad. And the first thing I want to do is um, chop up a shallot. You guys like shallots? What's your go-to onions? Shallots are, um, the shallots are going to be a little bit similar. They could be a replacement for uh, garlic. I keep chatting with you guys down here so, so we're in the same in the same boat here. This one has double shallots. I don't need that many shallots, so I'm going to break it apart, and I'm just going to use a, this one shallot that's about this size. Got a couple people I saw that joined, so just to, just to keep you updated, uh, what I have here is a skillet chicken. And it's, uh, it's just cooking with the skin down, a little bit of salt and pepper on there. Uh, and it's going to cook that way for about 15 minutes. We're going to turn it over. We're going to pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to put a glaze on it. So what I also did is I made, guys, I made a super yummy glaze, mustard, and not yellow mustard. You can't do yellow mustard is not um, is not it, right? So we got to go Dijon mustard, or even stone, just a little stone ground mustard in here, some maple syrup, and a little bit of garlic. In fact, oh yeah, that's going to be really wonderful. And now what I'm doing is I'm making a salad out of Brussels sprouts and out of kale. And so I've got the shallot, and I just want to mince the shallot up. What do you think you guys could use if you didn't have a shallot in your house? What do you have laying around the house, or what do you think is similar to a shallot flavor? Here's that little end. That's going to go in my that one. It's going to go in my uh, freezer bag. We talked about that yesterday. So we don't get the onion pieces in there. All right, that's good. Check in with you guys. Okay, this gets a little splattery over here, so just expect that. Marianne, hi there. Kim, hi Kim. How are you? How is Denver treating you? All right, guys, this is, just give us a little closer so you guys can see what I've got going on here. Got a salad in here. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of maple syrup. I'm going to whisk in, oh, and I've also got the, uh, one second, I've got some juice. I've got some fresh squeezed lemon, and I've got some fresh squeezed orange juice happening here. So I want to do some fun flavors with this. So right now, I'm going to put some lemon juice in there, and I'm going to do orange. So I think the orange is going to be really fun uh, with this maple. Syrup. All right. Now, if I had, and in fact, let me grab, uh, let me grab back my my mustard jar that I that I threw away. If I had a pinch of that mustard, there we go. I just want about a tablespoon of that mustard happening in here too. If you're coming in late, uh, when I pulled my mustard out, there wasn't enough mustard uh, that I wanted, and so what I did is I took some of the broth that we made yesterday into that container and I just uh, I'll just blend out my mustard. I'm adding in olive oil and I'm whisking while I'm adding it in nice and slow. And I'm making basically a dressing here. This is gonna be for our Brussels sprouts and for our kale salad. Keep uh, yourself a little bit of salt in there. Perfect. Now I'm gonna give you guys my tips. I'll come chat with you up here. Whenever you taste dressing, um, instead of just putting it on your finger, um, you want to taste it or tasting it with a spoon. 
taste it with the lettuce that you're going to eat it with because different lettuces are going to react differently and the dressing is going to react differently based on the lettuce. Um, a, a romaine lettuce is going to taste a lot differently than a kale. So I really like to take the, the lettuce that I'm eating or, or the vegetable you're eating with and just give it a little taste. Woo! Nice. It's got a little bit of um, it's got a little bit of that bite coming from uh, just a tang from the mustard, and it's got some nice salad flavor in there too. So that's really lovely. Mmm, that's that good. I actually think I'm gonna put a little more orange in because I like that orange. Let's check on our chicken over here, and I'm gonna check in if anybody's joined that we should be chatting with. Mary Ann says, I'm going to now order some pork chops from my farmer. Oh, that's perfect. This is going to be great uh, with pork chops, too. I think this will be lovely. Oh, yeah. Melissa says, love your fresh salad uh, dressing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see how the color has been changing here since, since we first put that in and starting to get a little more cooked? Now look at how nice and toasty this is starting to look here. These are looking really perfect. If you're just joining us, skillet chicken, you can hear it sizzling away. Uh, skin side down, bone in, and uh, we're cooking this 15 minutes like this. And with the oven heated, we're going to drop it in our oven. Over on this side, I'm making up a Brussels sprout and kale salad. And what I have here is I have olive oil, I have some mustard, I have some lemon juice, some orange juice, some salad, a little salt and pepper, and a touch of maple syrup. That's all that needs in that dressing. It's great. Um, but so I have some kale. I can't quite bend down there, so sorry guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Let me see if I can't lift my camera up a little bit so you guys can see me a little better. You might lose the chicken. Yeah, that's a little bit better, right? I just have some kale. You could certainly just chop this kale up with a knife. I like to pair things. Because the more you tear things, the more you'll get healing properties out of that lettuce versus just slicing it with a knife. So I do like to go this way instead. If I'm in a real hurry, I'm going to go ahead and just um, slice it up. It is a little bit faster, I think. Uh, depends on how you nice dress it, too, right? And listen, guys, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not short on blue here. I don't always have the most perfect knife skills. I don't have all that. But we don't need that to be in the kitchen. The kitchen is supposed to be just fun. It's supposed to be cooking. Like, you know, I just definitely have some chef friends who would, who would scowl at maybe some of the things that I, that I do in the, in the kitchen. I'm a little more laissez-faire. But I like to call it rustic cooking. It's just, uh, it's easy cooking. All right, let's just check in. Make sure I'm not missing any questions. Mary Ann says, uh, you know, the farmer doesn't have chicken yet. Mary Ann's uh, getting some new getting some pork chops. Marianne, uh, Marianne's getting some pork chops from a local farmer. Man, I love that, but they're out for delivery. That's fantastic. Um, but I don't have chickens yet. Really funny thing, really uh, interesting point about me, I used to raise chickens when I was younger. That's a good point. It was so fun to go out there and get those uh, farm fresh eggs. I want to talk to you a little bit about putting meat in a pan and then when you when uh, when it's cooking. If you ever feel like you can't turn your meat and it's still sticking, probably means it's not ready to be uh, turned yet. Wait till it releases and wants to go. Okay, that's my timer. If you could, um, if you're hearing that happen at all, we get this timer off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these upside over and I'm going to put them in the oven for 10 minutes. There we go. Oh my gosh, look at how great they are. I wonder how I feel that these are going to splatter a little bit. This must be going to be um, some of the best chicken you've ever had. It really is my favorite way to have chicken. Now, carefully drop this into your hot oven. There we go. That gives us a little more um, breathing room in terms of hearing me, right? Okay, that's in an oven, a 425 degree oven. And, uh, and now we're going to go back to our Brussels sprout salad. I've got some kale. 
this is purple kale. I've been using the same purple kale, kale for a couple of days because I still have it. And now I'm going to take my Brussels sprouts and I'm actually going to uh, shave them. Has anybody else done a shaved Brussels sprout salad before? I'm doing this with my mandolin. Tell me who has a mandolin out there. This to me is one of my indispensable tools right next to uh, a chef's knife. I really use it for everything and I think what I love most about it is that um, you can get some really consistent shade. I'm gonna put, actually put this over here because it's a little easier for me to work with. Now I will tell you mandolins are notorious for injuring people, just kind of like that if you move your, your hand a little bit too much. <laughs> Um, I certainly sliced off my uh, little fingertips a couple of times. These do come with guards. Um, I highly recommend when you're not used to working with a mandolin, use the guard. It'll make a big difference uh, for you so you don't get injured. The rest of you, they also have those, uh, they also have gloves, like they have these little gloves that, that, uh, that you can't slice through. That's helpful as well. Oh, you know what, let's set our timer. I said 10 minutes I want this to cook in the, um, in the oven and um, so let me just add a timer so we get 10 minutes going some things I don't add timers for I just instinctively kind of know but uh, when it comes to meat I don't I like to just be a little more um, a little more especially poultry I like to be a little more honest about it I know little Brussels sprouts are trying to jump out at me today I'm not sure why so what I'm doing is I'm just Shaving off the Brussels sprout. Guys, you can do this with a knife too. Let me show you. Um, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have this mandolin, you just come in here and you just lightly shave off these thin little pieces of Brussels sprout. Get yourself a flat surface to work on. That's a little bit easier. So there's never anything, I'm never going to show you anything, or I'm going to try to not show you anything that you can't do at your house. So I had, I don't know, a couple handfuls of kale, I think that was. Oops, got some Brussels sprouts that are hiding. I'm going to take these little ends and pieces, those are going in my broth. Anybody make that broth yesterday? No, a few people actually uh, sent some pictures up. I think Sue, I don't know if Sue's on, but Sue sent some pictures up too. Okay. There's our Brussels sprouts. Shave the Brussels sprouts. See how thin they get? Oops. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It's a different way to have a Brussels sprout. And um, this salad, once you make it, lasts a long time in the refrigerator. It's not like a salad that goes bad in like a day. Um, Louanne says, oh, hi, Louanne. And, and uh, Louanne says hi to Rosie, too. I like when there's connections happening out here. Uh, Mary Ann says mandolins scare the crap out of me. Uh, you know what? You could use a yeah. You said you could use a food processor for this too. Um, honestly, just respect the mandolin. Here is the 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 guard that I have. I probably should have just used that. Um, so what you would do is is uh, I think it's hard with this uh, Brussels sprout. Again, get yourself a flat surface, and then it sticks on there and it goes like this. So you wouldn't injure yourself, right? Uh, I do think the guard makes a big difference uh, when you're starting out. And I think there's this weird innate sense of when something's going to happen. I've had it before when I'm cutting something and I go, mm, I really probably should move my finger or I really should be using that guard. Instinctively, every single time is when I actually nick my finger and I go, oh, I have that instinct. Why didn't I do that? And just a little more of that maple syrup. I'm just going to Drizzle it on here because why not just save all those little pieces and parts that we have and set that over there. Um, so for those of you who are joining us, like skillet chicken, we're making a maple um, a Dijon glaze to go on the top. Our skillet chicken is in the oven, and we're also making a fresh Brussels sprout salad. Just make sure I'm not missing anything there. Okay, in here I've got a dressing that we did on the bottom. We used lemon juice, we used orange juice, we used a little bit of maple syrup. And we use um, a little bit of uh, Dijon mustard. Um, and uh, I think that's everything I got in there, some salt and some pepper. Then I put some, tour some kale. I've got some shaved Brussels sprouts in here. And the next thing I'm gonna add is I've got some shredded cheese. Now the cheese that I used today was a, um, it's kind of a Parmesan cheddar mix. 
it's this it's this crazy it's this crazy cheese that I found. I was working in a national restaurant show um, one last year. I think it was last year. And uh, as I was leaving, one of the vendors uh, had this giant wheel of cheese. You know those, those wheels of cheese? They're like you know they're like giant. They're like this big. Um, was giving away this wheel of cheese, and nobody wanted it, so I took it. Um, I put it in my backpack. I walked myself to the L, and I and I brought it home with me. And I was very nervous. Somebody was gonna like mug me for my cheese. So I was like, everybody knows I have a wheel of cheese in my backpack, but it has really become one of my favorite favorite cheeses. Uh, so it's a Parmesan cheddar mix. And whatever you have at the house, if you have some manchango, I'm getting a little messy with my salad. Um, if you have just some cheddar, if you have some goat cheese, if you have some um, anything that's like a hard cheese would go really well here. Okay, so I'm gonna toss in just a little bit of cheese. And of course you could skip the cheese too if you're vegan. And then I have uh, just some toasted almonds. And these one I these ones I am gonna give it just a little bit of a chop. Not a bunch, but just a little rough chop. Okay, another thing that you could do is Marianne said if you're gonna do your Brussels sprouts in a food processor and just let that slice up these Brussels sprouts for you, you could throw these almonds in there and just give that a once or two chop. I think a couple of mine are getting away. Oh, another one getting yeah, no away. See, like I said, I'm not the most perfect chef out there, and I don't think anybody needs to be. It's about just getting in there and having fun with it, and just, you know, it's okay. It's okay. We don't have to be perfect. I'm not, so you know you don't have to be. Um, look at that. Whoops, where are we at? Yeah, isn't that like great? I, I do think this is just such a, was such a lovely flavor. It's such an easy flavored salad with the orange and the lemon in there, that little bit of cheese, that saltiness and the nuttiness of the almonds. Now I did um, I did toast my almonds um, ahead of time too because I think that gives a little more nuttiness. Is no, I like uh, raw almonds, um, but, but, um, but this time I just wanted, I took the raw almonds and I just toasted them in a dry pan uh, with nothing else in them because that way you're avoiding all those highly processed oils that end up uh, in um, that end up getting added into uh, into uh, toasted oils when you buy them pre-toasted. So okay, let's see. Glasses. Let me check in with you guys. How we doing? Um, let me just see what everybody's up to. Let's see. Carol says I still have a bachelor kitchen. Um, <laughs> you know we can we can uh, maybe we should do a here's my essentials. Would that be helpful for you guys if I said here's my essentials of what I think you need in a bare minimum kitchen, you know, a chef's knife. Um, I wouldn't put things like mandolin on there, but those would be like added added bonuses. So let me know if that would be helpful and, and we can get that going maybe next week. What else? Hello, Gretchen's with us. Hi, Gretchen. It looks like uh, Amber joined us as well too. Just catching back up on the comments. Amber, great question. What do you do if you don't have maple syrup around? Any ideas? Let me see if I can I can pick your brains for a second and see if you can come up with, with any thoughts about what you could use as a sweetener in there. And I'll read on for a moment. Ah, there she is. Um, Amber, so, uh, and for those of you that joined on late, I think Gretchen came in late. I'm working on with a new microphone today in hopes that you guys can, can hear me even better. Uh, it's not wireless, so I'm wired. Um, what we made today is we're making skillet chicken with a maple uh, Dijon glaze. The chicken is now in the oven. We put it in a cast iron skillet. We put it skin down. Don't be afraid of skin. It has really good flavor to it. We put it skin down and we cooked it for 15 minutes. Flipped it over and we're putting it in the oven, uh, a 425 degree oven for uh, for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna let it cook for a couple minutes after that when I put the glaze on. This is uh, this is a, a turkey that I made earlier because not everybody in my household likes chicken. So we have to be flexible. And you might not, you might have turkey in your house. But look at how yummy, I'm gonna just bring this up to you guys. This skin is so crispy. And that's why I'm cooking it this way. If you wanted it to be really, really, really easier, you could take your chicken, throw it in the pan, cook the whole thing for 30, 40 minutes in the oven and be done. Um, but this way, the way that we're cooking, you're going to get a much crispier skin out of it. And that's what I'm going for. Uh, I've got two minutes. I'm just checking it for a minute. I've got two minutes for that chicken. 
uh, to finish in there before I turn it and put the glaze on. Here's the glaze that we mixed up. So what I have in here is, and we're doing double duty, so I've got Dijon mustard, I've got maple syrup, I've got a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar in here, and some salt and some pepper, and then I put a tiny, um, I did a tiny uh, piece of garlic in here too. When I pull that chicken out, we're down to about one minute, I'm gonna pour it over that, put it back in the oven. It's gonna be awesome for just a couple of minutes. Over here, recapping, Brussels sprout salad. And what we did with this one is I took kale and Brussels sprouts and shaved the Brussels sprouts. I've got some toasted almonds and a little um, and a little grated cheese. I use kind of a Parmesan cheddar uh, cheese. Uh, anything anything closer to a hard cheese is going to be great, but man, go with what you have, right? What's in your house that you can use up? That means you don't have to go outside and get anything else. That's what this is all about, trying to cook out of our pantry. Uh, I've got my trusty uh, thermometer helps when you have things like chicken. Chicken should be done to 165 degree uh, temperature. Um, and if you don't have the meat thermometer, you could you could cut into your chicken and you just want those juices to run clear. Same with the turkey. Um, so going back, I asked you a question like what could you use if you don't have the maple syrup? I'm going to see if we got any questions or any answers to that. Um, Yes, honey, exactly. Honey is a really great option for maple syrup. It's going to change the flavor just a little bit in here, but it's still going to be great. There's that sweetness that goes with that with that maple or with that um, Dijon mustard. So I think honey is a really great option. Brown rice syrup would be okay too. Now I wouldn't go with something as heavy as like a molasses because I think the molasses is just going to be a little bit um, a little bit too much. Okay, let's check our chicken, shall we? Sizzling away. Ah, love those big cast iron skillets. Okay, guys, take a look at this. I've, I moved you up so you could see me. I'm going to move you back down so you could see the, the chicken that I have going on here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful crispy skin. It's really lovely. Um, and that's what I wanted. I really want the crispy skin. I think you guys are going to be happy with that. Now we're going to take this uh, maple Dijon mustard glaze. Oh, actually, I'm going to do one more thing. I thought of this uh, earlier. That broth, if you watched and we made um, broth yesterday with all of your pieces and your parts and your ends of all your vegetables, I just throw them with water and I make a broth. I'm adding just a little bit of maybe even a quarter of a cup in there. And that was my broth from yesterday. It's a little purplish because I had purple kale and I had a little bit of purple cabbage in there. So if you put purple cabbage in there, it's going to turn purple. Trust me. I've done it. You see it. Okay. Guys. Mm, that looks good. I think I don't even need all of it. I'm just going to put that much in there because I have that broth. And I'm just going to let this go back in the oven for about five minutes. Make sure our oven's up to about 425. Let me bring you guys back up so you can see me. Working out these camera deals, guys. I'm still I'm still learning with this, so thanks for bearing with. I think, gosh, is it Wednesday? And I think this might be officially one week for me, for you guys joining me. So thank you for joining me. I hope you guys are getting some good stuff out of this. And, and as always, let me know how I can help you and what's your, in your pantry. So let me check in here. Um, Marianne says, essentials. See uh, the David Shaw um, Twitter from yesterday. Did he do essentials? That sounds really good. I'll go and, and check his out and, and uh, modify for what I think should be in the kitchen because we're all different, right? We all have different needs and we cook a little bit um, differently. But I think there's some base items and, and base um, utensils that will really help you if you have them in the kitchen. I did say this is uh, this is live um, uh, live filming and things happen in here. The other day uh, the doorbell rang. Today I kept thinking that uh, the fire alarm was going to go off because uh, cooking that chicken sometimes gets a little bit smoky because I cook it on high heat. Um, and the microwave, I, I don't really use microwaves anyway. Um, I'm going to add a timer. I forgot to add a timer here. So let me get that going. Five minutes. Um, but what happened is this microwave, all of our little buttons are depressed and I can't get them back out. 
Um, so if anybody knows anything about microwave repair or Vikings, send send your people my way and tell them, ask them to tell me how to get this panel off so I can fix this because I don't have a fan. So when I was cooking this turkey this morning um, for a member of my household who doesn't eat chicken, um, my fire alarm went off. I opened up all the windows and it actually is a nice breeze. Thankfully, it's like 50 degrees in Chicago today. What's it like where everybody else is? Okay. Gretchen and Casey. Hi, guys. Yeah, Gretchen, I think you'd love this salad. And what I like about this salad, too, is it's really hearty, so it's going to last a long time in the refrigerator, but it's something you actually have to slow down to eat. You can't just chew it a couple times and run, right? Chewing our food is so vitally important. You know, it's one of the first, and it's actually the only, um, the only part of control we have over digesting our food is how much we chew it. So um, slowing down and fully chewing your food, you know, they say at least 20 times your food is supposed to be almost liquidy. The more we chew our food here, the easier it is for our stomach to digest it down here. You know, imagine if the stomach is working on, on breaking down the food because we didn't chew it enough. Um, it doesn't have a chance, you know, when it goes to the, it might not finish breaking all that down. It doesn't have a chance to really, um, to pull the nutrients out, which actually happens in the, in the small intestine. So if the stomach's trying to break down food and it gives up and it, and it says, all right, we got to push this on, you know, the next guy down the road is going to be like, oh man, this isn't, this wasn't our job, but we got to break this down. We can't pull nutrients out because we're still breaking the food down, right? That can cause a lot of different problems all the way, um, all the way downstream. You can get gassy from this. You can really get, um, there can be bloating. Uh, we can damage our stomach acid. So you get a lot of different things that can happen. Just the simple act of not chewing our food enough. So this salad makes you slow down because it's it's so hard and you have to slow down and chew. That'd be a good practice for everybody. Um, let's see, did I miss any other uh, any other questions? Tracy just joined us too. Hi, Tracy. So what we're doing today, I'm gonna recap for just a second here. I've got um, I've got three minutes, I think, before my checking my timer, so bear with me. Two and a half minutes before my chicken comes back out of the oven. So, so let's talk. Give me a give me a topic. <laughs> Three fill some time here. I uh, I am gonna go back and recap as soon as my chicken comes out. I'm gonna make some make some space here, and uh, and see and see what everybody's up to. Quiet. Quiet crowd. And I also know there's a delay. I'm trying to get used to that too. So again, um, thank you guys for being here. I'm in Chicago. We actually have sun today. It's really nice. Like I said, 50 degrees. And this is crazy. If uh, Rosie, if you're on, I took a walk yesterday. Um, I went by the river and I swear I saw three loons. Like I, I guess I didn't really, I've never seen a loon in, in Chicago before. Um, I think of these as only Minnesota animals. Are, is that are Minnesota birds? I should say. Is that a thing? Like, like loons could be here. I think this is kind of this nice idea that that Earth is um, us being all sequestered like this um, and quarantined as giving chance. Earth is giving itself a chance to sort of just um, regroup a little bit. So that's kind of nice seeing some animals that we don't normally see. I see a lot of posts from my friends in Colorado too, where animals are coming down from the mountains and, and hanging out in town. So uh, really great opportunity for the animals to to uh, re, re, regain their composure. Good. Okay, let's check in. I've got about a minute left. I'm going to look at my chicken. Bring that back out. Oh yeah. Oh guys. Look how good this looks. Let me put this over here so you guys can see this. That's it. Now, um, oh, the other thing I was going to say, if you don't want to make the Brussels sprout salad, you could, when we put the chicken in the oven, you could just take some Brussels sprouts. I was going to do this and, and I totally forgot. You could take these and just throw them in with the chicken. You could even, you could even throw like, like some potatoes or some carrots in there and throw them in there and just have those be done if you don't feel like having a, a full salad like this. Um, the other thing that we can do is now we want this chicken to rest, right? This chicken should rest at least five minutes before, uh, before we serve it. Because if you cut it open now without it resting, what can happen is, there's our timer right on time. 
is you're gonna lose a lot of those juices. So you've gotta let this just be quiet and just let it control, and just let it soften in and just let it seal back up in a sense. You can take your pan, put it back on the heat, turn it to a boil just to thicken that sauce a little bit, just letting it evaporate. Um, you could do something like a, like a little tapioca or an arrow starch. Um, I would stay away from, from corn starch. Corn is, is, the, is the most genetically modified um, crop. Uh, one of the most, mod I think it's corn and, and soy are the two most genetically modified crops. Uh, and so I don't go cornstarch, put a little tapioca in there. If you really wanted to do some flour, you could do some flour if you wanted that to, to thicken. I just put it back on and just simmer it a little bit and let it just happen that way. So guys, we've got our skillet chicken, super, super, super crispy, super crispy uh, exterior on these guys. This is sitting in a little maple balsamic, uh, excuse me, maple balsamic, maple Dijon glaze. We'll get ourselves a little spoon over here. Look at that, and just pour that right over the top. This would be lovely, you know, over the top of a rice, too. Um, yeah, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Because this is a really super easy recipe. A couple of steps just to get it in the in the oven, but I think um, it's worth it because it makes it so crispy. And then we've got our Brussels sprout and kale salad with some orange juice, some lemon juice because that's what I had around, um, and some and uh, and some cheese, and then a little bit of um, nuts in there. A little olive oil too, some salt, some pepper. Uh, I will get these recipes posted up on the site. As I've said before, um, all of the recipes we've done to date are on my site at happyeatshealthy.com. Um, I'll get this one up today too, so you guys have this one. And uh, the skillet chicken's actually up there. It just doesn't have the glaze on it. I added the glaze in there uh, today because I thought it'd be really fun to make two things that are both using mustard and um, Dijon. So that's why we uh, created that. Um, if you make these, don't forget to tag me, Happy Eats Healthy, um, on Instagram or on Facebook, or just show everybody on our group. And uh, just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody's last minute questions. Um, and don't forget, like, like we're here. This is I'm doing this to help, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> helping you guys um, just cook. Not everybody is used to being at the house and cooking, and and just cooking out of your pantry is sometimes hard too, because there's those old beans that have been there forever. So. If there's something in your pantry, don't hesitate to reach out and be like, hey, could you do something on blah, blah, blah. I've got some really cool stuff planned for later this week. And I hope you guys keep tuning in and just let me know um, how I can help. And, and I'm sending you all lots of love and energy. And I uh, hope you guys are all doing really well. Thanks so much for joining. And I'll talk to you guys all soon. Bye.